In this second part of the tutorial, we're going to go over how to create your second key pose and then how to do automatic in-betweening from one pose to the other. All right, now what I'm going to do is we're going to take, go over to our level strip here. We're going to take this image and what, what the next step is, is to put it in this position. And what we're going to do is we're not going to just draw a whole new vector shape, all the new vector shapes for this position. What we're going to do is we're going to take this actual image and manipulate it into this position. Into this position. And the way we're going to do that is by selecting it here in the level strip, right clicking, and doing duplicate drawing. Now let's take the second drawing and put it in the frame underneath the first one. Now what we're going to do is go to the second frame of our first column with the rough image on it, select the second frame, select the edit tool, select position, hold shift, and we'll move this over on the horizontal axis to right about, mm, let's say, let's say this uh, foot on the right here maintains its position and the rest of the body moves and this this foot stays planted on the ground so we'll move our rough so that the toes kind of stay in the same spot all right and now staying on our second frame going to our vector lay our vector column we're now editing the second image this one and we're going to take the shapes we already have and move them into the correct position so that I can see the line work I'm going to put the opacity down again to about 60 percent that works just so I can see my line work alright now let's start moving our vector work into position what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the head and neck and just sort of move them to the side for now let's move them over here just so they're out of our way and we can get the body into position now, in order to do this, the most important part for facilitating the in-betweening process with the open tunes is to make sure that you're keeping track of all your control points. So if I go to my control point editor tool and I select my fist, the really important thing to do here is to make sure that this control point that I have as my wrist stays as my wrist. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually take our selection tool and just sort of move the hand into position, remembering there's a control point right here that's going to be our wrist. We'll just sort of move it right here. Now let's go to our control point editor tool. And we can start moving the points to where we want them. Now that hand looks kind of terrifying. We can start taking our anchor points and manipulate them into position. Another thing I like to do I'm going to undo what I just did here, is when I start moving control points like this, I like to reset them so that their anchor points go back into the, so the anchor points disappear and they become sharp corners. So I'll hold Alt and click the corner, click the control point rather. And so now basically I'm back to my rectangle. So let's go ahead and move these points to roughly where we want them. Let's manipulate our body. So first things first, I'm going to take my selection tool and I'm just going to kind of move it over roughly into position and tilt it a little bit just so I have less manipulation to do in my control points. And this is the most important part of doing the automatic in-betweening, is making sure that you keep your vector points holding the same roll that they hold um, from one image to the next when you're going to do an in-between between two images. That's the most important part. Because when you do the automatic in-betweening, what it's doing is it's taking the actual control points themselves and finding, uh, we'll say, the first drawing drawing A and then 
the second drawing. So here's drawing A and here's drawing B. When you do the automatic in between, it's taking this point's position in drawing A and then putting it, interpolating it in between that position and the position that it ends up in in drawing B. So making sure that you maintain those points is very important, very important, very important. All right, that looks pretty good. The body's in a good position. Let's do the feet. Once again, we want to maintain uh, our control points roles that they played in the first image. So this point right here was the ankle. So we'll want this point to stay the ankle. And this point's sort of the top of the toes, so we can keep that. Go ahead and put it there. And this point was the heel. So we'll bring the heel point up there. Now this was the left foot. This time we have some funky stuff going on because the foot actually flips so that the toes, rather than being on the left of the image, end up on the right of the image. So what we'll do is we'll first select the object using the selection tool and bring it over to where we want it. Once again, we want the ankle point to maintain its uh, role as the ankle. So we'll kind of put it right there. Put the heel right here and flip these points over. Now everything's all twisted, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is hold Alt and bring all those anchor points back in so that I have a nice rectangle again. All right, now let's get going on the head. Now it's important for me to tell you right now, you may notice that this ear is now, it's behind the head and it's behind the, the uh, body. We obviously want it to be on the front, but whenever you're doing automatic in-betweening, you do not want to change the level of any of your shapes from the original image that you copied and then the pasted image that you manipulate. You don't want to change the level at all because it will confuse open tunes and it won't know which points are which. So don't worry about things being overlapped or behind where they ought to be. That's something we'll take care of in the cleanup after we do the automatic in between. For now, you'll just need to leave them sort of behind or in front of when they shouldn't be. So once again, we got the foot here, which should obviously be behind this leg, but it's showing up in front of it. Just leave it. We'll take care of that in the cleanup process. I'm not sure why all of a sudden that is red, but we'll just keep moving on. All right, so let's move the eyes into position. Once again, you're going to want to maintain the control points roles. So the top of the eye, we need this point to stay the top of the eye, this point to stay the left of the eye, this point to stay the right of the eye. So we'll kind of just move this into position. And do the same with this eye. And now you could manipulate them this way using your selection tool and using the various points, manipulation points around your selection. But what we're going to do is actually use the control points. So let's go ahead and select our control point editor tool. Here it is. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to hold Alt and bring in all those anchor points so that I have a nice solid triangle again. And the reason I do that, I'll show you, is just because now if I move this point over here, you see how the shape gets all distorted and we're just going to have to fix it anyway. So it's easier, I've found, just to bring all those anchor points back in and then you can just move things to where you need them and pull those anchor points back out. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to remove our roughs. Let's click and hold here and bring up the opacity. opacity. And now we have this vector right here and this one. And we're going to automatic in between, between these two. 
All right, so what we're going to do is go over to our level strip here, and we will select the second image, and right click, and click insert. Now I have it quick set to I, have the shortcut set to I, so I'll go ahead and do it, and now I'm going to just hit I and add a few in. Let's add, let's add five in. Now you can also do this in the ink and paint, or you can do it anywhere that you have the level strip visible. What we're going to do is take our first image, hold shift, and select our last image. And when we do that, you can see over here, this little button appears over here that says in between. You click it, and you may have to click more towards the right than towards the left, because I've noticed if I click like right here, it doesn't read me as clicking it. So click more towards the right of the little in between. And what we'll do is we'll have an ease out so that now what it's going to do is it's going to make the motions bigger and then smaller. So it looks as if the movement is faster and then slower. So we'll do ease out and you just click in between. And now if we look at the images we have, we've created a nice sort of in-between motion. Now you'll notice a few problems besides the fact that we have objects in front and behind when they ought to be the opposite. You'll also notice that this hand shrinks real tiny as does this foot before growing again. Now that we've created our two key poses and created some in-betweens between those poses, it's time to clean them up a bit. Click the link below to head to the next tutorial where we cover cleanup.